I'm Leo Walter for Kit Guru. This is John Martin, Day and our news chap, and also now our VR specialist. Uh, we recently went through, or John went through, some uh, Sapphire AMD graphics cards to see how they worked in the uh, Steam VR performance test. And he's now been back and done it all over again, this time with NVIDIA GTX graphics card supplied by Asus. So we've got four cards here, so we're going to show you what we've got, and then John's going to tell you what he found. So starting at the bottom of the pack, we have... We've got the GTX 950, which is the baby of the bunch. Better. And in the U retails for about one twenty one thirty yeah. pounds in the UK, relatively speaking, a tiddler. Yeah, Next in comparison up. to some of these, certainly. Next up, we've got the GTX nine seventy, a little bit more expensive, around the uh, three hundred pound mark. Now we're leapfrogging there. We're leapfrogging nine sixty. We're going straight yeah. into proper gaming territory. And the nine fifty, yeah. in a way, is our sort of unfair comparison. Right. Well, this one's important though because this is the actual the baseline uh, graphics card right. that I recommend, along with the R nine two ninety. And this takes us up to about the three hundred pound ish yeah. mark. Okay. So Ish, now we're talking proper version. gaming territory. Yep. And then over there we have. Next, we've got the 980. Uh, this is the Poseidon model, but yeah, for all intents and purposes, the GTX 980. Um, slightly more powerful card again, and again, a bit more expensive. We're now north of £400, but yeah. uh, we're proper, proper gaming. Uh, we know for gaming, good question is for VR, how do we get on? And yeah. finally, we've got the absolute monster of this GTX 980 Ti which is uh, rather impressive to look at, and it performed rather well too. And that's the ASUS Matrix Platinum, yeah. uh, which is, uh, did we think that's 550 or so? Yeah, it's, so, it's not uh, a cheap card at all. Indeed, so from the one end of the scale to the other, uh, which we go with? Should, should we tell ladies and gentlemen, how do we get on with the 980T? Or how did you get on with the 980T? I mean, a very impressive piece of kit because uh, not only did it achieve the highest fidelity rating we've seen so far, it was like 11.1, uh, right. it achieved the very highest quality rating throughout the entire demo, didn't okay. dip below that at all, uh, and achieved pretty impressive frame rates as well. So if you spend £550 and you've got a decent PC and yep. you're running a Core i5, which is a perfectly recommended mm -hmm. setup, and you plug in a £550 graphics card, it performs yeah. quite nicely. It does. I mean, as you expect. Shock and indeed but, uh, horror. Yeah. Okay. If we go down a notch to the Poseidon, mm -hmm. did it perform any differently? Uh, I mean, it performed a little more at the expected level. Um, the, the TI really blew things out of the park. The, the 980 uh, performed very well, had a good quality rating throughout. I think it was around 8.8. .8. Right. Um, which is sort of roughly where we'd expect it to be. North really. of 7 is acceptable, uh, yeah. below 7 bad, and do you want to see 8, 9 or 10, or is 7 okay with you? I mean, it's it's nice. <laughs> a, little, a little bit of extra visuals is always right. always good to see. Uh, it's 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 kind of the thing of um, how important it is to you, you know, how, how deep are your pockets really. If this is the kind of purchase that's going to make sense to you right. for your budget, then it's well worth it. Okay. Then we step down to the GTX 970, yeah. uh, which in terms of money is worth having. What sort of numbers did you get with the 970? That was a, a 6.8, which is perfectly acceptable. Um, and this is the sort of, um, although, although you might consider it the entry level for yep. VR, um, it's actually at a sort of a recommended specs level if you're thinking more traditional games. Um, it did, did very well. Right. Now, th this is the one I've been, I actually, <laughs> I mean, I'm interested in all of these. I'm most interested in 950 right. because the thing I've been waiting for is, you know, good, better, best is great. Mm -hmm. Was this rubbish or what did it do? Did it perform at all? Did it work? If you do it uh, by the numbers, yep. uh, in one sense, it's, it did very well in that it achieved 90 frames per second consistently or more right. throughout the entire benchmark. This is like the school thing, isn't it? No one's a loser. Everyone's a winner. Right. Okay, yeah. Right, okay. Right. Now, uh, now, tell us the truth. If we're talking fidelity rating, it, it did very poorly. It, Which it, was, come on, hit the number. It was a 1.1. Uh, right, which so, is just dreadful. You know, in, okay. in, yeah. But the frame rate? Yeah, it was excellent. I achieved more than, uh, I think, an average of 100 plus throughout the entire demo. So technically... So, so basically, they're putting work. back on the quality, but the frame rate kept up. So when you, when you use this, when you use this, a perfectly reasonable graphics card, mm -hmm. when you use this perfectly reasonable graphics card f to power your VR headset, it, you, it will work. It will, yeah. I mean, it, right. there's, there's probably some games where it will work perfectly well. Right. Uh, if there's smaller environments, if the, if the graphical fidelity of the game isn't particularly right. high, it will probably do a great job. I don't think it's a card we'd recommend for virtual right. reality. Uh, and if you're going to spend you know, upwards of £700 on like an HTC Vive, You've probably got enough money to uh, to get yourself a nice graphics card as well. Well, not once you spent the money on the HTC Vive. Well, that's, but, that's the okay, thing. right. So turning this the other way around, if mm -hmm. you have a Core i5 modern PC with SSD and a, a graphics card that's recent, mm -hmm. 
you're actually good to go. Yeah. Even if it upgrade always better, but this this GTX 950 from Asus, it works. It works with the uh, yeah. which um, I'm so glad. And what can you say about comparing these Asus NVIDIA cards with the Sapphire AMD cards? Uh, without being too controversial. Yeah, well, the uh, the 980 Ti achieved a result that easily trounced the Fury X. Right. Um, and um, the 980 was kind of in that sort of um, ballpark too. Um, 950, way off the bottom of the scale. We're kind of forgetting no, no, we'll, comparison, we'll, we'll, but... Um, we've moved that to one side sure. now. Okay, but... Given that the Fury X costs about north of five hundred pounds, mm -hmm. and this is five hundred and fifty, yeah. in terms of money, they're the same. Now, are you saying as straightforward as forget Fury X, you want a GTX nine eighty Ti, or is it more nuanced than that? I, a little bit more nuanced in terms of um, the drivers that we used. The um, Nvidia drivers we used were post VR headset release, so it means they. They were uh, built with VR in mind. Yep. Um, they've probably had a few tweaks in the back end to make things move a bit more smoothly. Um, whereas the AMD drivers we used, um, due to scheduling, mm. uh, were um, released before the VR headsets were all uh, launched. So perhaps if we went and retested cards, if right. we had still had access to them, we could probably uh, we will. Oh, but... We, you will obviously be right. retesting okay. uh, when you're doing um, your in-depth reviews of the actual mm. VR headsets. Um, this is this is clearly a burning question. But as things stand right now, the numbers you've got, Fury X mm -hmm. doesn't match GTX 980 Ti, not so but the same. it's not a straightforward tested on the same day at the same time. They yeah. were tested at different times with different drivers. Uh, yeah. And it's very early days, of course, of VR. The headsets yeah. are coming out right now. In There's, fact, the headsets are kind of coming out right now. Yeah, they're arriving. See news in on Kip Drabs about, about delays in components. Yeah. But as things stand right now, the king of the heap is the GTX 980 Ti. In this instance, a Matrix Platinum. That's the best on the other hand, the uh, Poseidon. Yeah, equally. You, you wouldn't turn it away from the no, front door. No, at all. And your GTX 970 here. Uh, it lived up to the billing. Yeah, I mean, the GTX 970 is probably, um, if we had to recommend any card, I think that's probably the one because it not only delivered a good fidelity rating, a good frame rate, and the price isn't too extreme. Indeed, right. Excellent. So, uh, for the time being, that's our snapshot. I think it's the best way of saying it. It's not a roundup so, of AMD yeah. versus NVIDIA, not by a long chalk, but this is our snapshot. This is John's snapshot. Oh, that's a nice oh, way Thank to you for your answers. John snapshot of uh, the range here we have of Asus NVIDIA graphics cards uh, we're using the Steam VR benchmark. Uh, I'm Leo Ward for Kit Guru. This is John Martindale.